drugs and the epigenome. We are, gosh, we've got another fun-filled medical episode today, all centered around uh, one of our most popular topics, and that's pain, specifically chronic pain and specifically pain that's in the back of the neck. We've received a lot of questions on the past episodes about that. So we wanted to focus this one on why those things, uh, those those um, great cases were, were um, ended up the way they were and what Dr. Seas is thinking about when he sees that chronic back pain. But before we begin, folks, Dr. Seeds, if you don't know about his bio, he is, yes, a cellular medicine doctor and physician. He trains physicians and practitioners on cellular medicine, on peptide therapy, stem cell therapy, all these things. But he is also, by day and by earlier day, I want to say, a practicing orthopedic surgeon. So he is um, uh, fresh out of the OR, I believe, today. And probably one of the world experts when it comes to specifically orthopedic stuff and of course cellular medicine. So he has incredible background specifically on this topic. Um, and so I just wanted to start the episode off there in case we have new viewers and listeners who don't know you, Doc. So hello and welcome. All okay. right. <laughs> Before we begin, I also want to mention that he is the academic director of the SSRP Institute, training other physicians and practitioners on cellular medicine and their peptide therapy. He is also the author and researcher writing the first book on peptide therapy for practitioners called Peptide Protocols Volume 1, and most recently published another paper on NADPH and mitochondrial uh, quality control as a therapy for Parkinson's disease. Um, and if you're new to this podcast, as I've heard from a few of our emails, uh, this podcast is dedicated to the cellular to cellular medicine and how it can return efficiency back to the cell in order to influence the epigenome, which is the science of aging. All right. So if you have any questions, please keep them coming. Email them to info at seeds.md. That's seeds, S-E-E-D-S dot Mary dot, uh, I'm sorry, dot Mary David in place of the com. That's another comment I received. <laughs> Wonderful. And everything that you hear and see today is all for informational purposes only. Please always consult with your own physician before moving forward. That said, doc. Okay. So as an introduction to this episode, pain, particularly in chronic back pain and neck pain, there's an article I'm going to post here um, in the in the comment section for uh, science from Science Daily, um, and one of the questions, most sought after questions we get consistently asked for Doctor Seeds is, it suggests a rethinking of what causes pain in this article, and how it could potentially be treated with PRT, which I've learned is pain reprocessing therapy. Um, and just to quote the article before I get into what those questions are that we get a lot for Dr. Seeds is this PRT therapy, the goal is to educate the patient about the role in the brain in generating chronic pain to help them reappraise their pain as they engage in movements as they've been afraid to do so. And it helps them address emotions that may exacerbate these things. This article was published last year. So it's been it's been quite a bit since it's out. And I know, Doc, that you've been going a little bit against the grain in a lot of ways, um, particularly when it comes to specific joints that you treat and of course back pain and neck pain. Um, instead of the rest of the physicians though, or I wouldn't even say that, the rest of the cases that you get where um, they get, uh, they don't wanna move, they wanna rest. I've heard you say time and time again, you need to keep it moving. So again, this is another example of you're ahead of, <laughs> you're just kind of, it's, it's weird that we, we find these articles and you've been doing this for years, um, which just makes me so happy that you're doing this podcast. But I think this is an important place to start. And that is to get an understanding of pain specifically from your perspective. So doc, if we can start there, that would be great. Um, for cases of chronic back pain and neck pain, what's happening and what makes it chronic? Wow. So nobody really knows. Let's let's start off with that. And there are lots of theories. And I think 
I'll give you my thoughts on where where I believe the science is heading in confirming and has kind of validated what I've said for the last probably six or eight years concerning specifically this area. That pain is, so this article you referenced is, you know, the pain reprocessing therapy. It's very interesting because it's a it's an approach to that doesn't get down to the specific cellular science of why we believe this is happening, but it's an amazing correlation to to what is happening at the cellular level. So I'm going to try to, since you brought this paper up, I'm going to try to correlate these together to show you the 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 synergies with the approach they took here and how this does come together when we look at the cellular level and understand these pathways that lead to chronic pain. So that being said, let's just go back to this paper and and it's it, it's what it, it, the essence of this paper is that they reprogram their let, let's just assume that chronic pain has to do with if you just took the brain and we don't isolate any areas and get complicated with it we just say the brain has become rewired it, it's it's rewired in a way that there's misfiring of information in the brain that leads to unusual pain meaning if you're touched in an area where you were injured in the past or your things that typically haven't uh, that typically wouldn't affect one person with a slight touch uh, causes increased significant pain to another person that has chronic pain. Um, there are names for this. It's called allodynia, but it, it's not relevant because we're. it's all about just understanding these basics, which I'm, I'm trying to keep it pretty simple, but I'll probably go off the deep end here in a bit but so if we just understand that that there's a misfiring of pathways basically in the brain and that misfiring has to do with different different areas in the brain that activate during this chronic pain which typically aren't activated they may be activated early on with growth when the brain is developing its plasticity and developing areas that are sensitive to pain and and understanding pain but when we're later on as adults those areas don't basically grow anymore they're they're not they're not um trying to create new synapses in the brain they're not trying to increase signaling they're in a good place they know what to do when they, a pain response, meaning I get punched in the shoulder and I feel that pain. It's a somatosensory pain that is mechanical that goes up the arm to my brain telling me, oh, I just got hit right here and it hurts. So that's pain. If let's say I just touched this area and I got that same sharp pain as I did from punching it, or that's what you tend to see with chronic pain where there's this misfiring that the brain perceives as this increase in pain that's out of proportion to typically what you would expect. That's because of this miswiring. And, and so what they did is they said, well, listen, let's take an approach, a cognitive therapy approach where we have mindful participation of the patient and let's train them how to push through this and to not get it, 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 it. So some of these centers in the brain that are misfiring are areas that are associated with uh, fear and, and, and reward and things like that, that, that are significant because they're misfiring and, and they're, they're what amplify the, the, this pain process. Well, if you can train the brain to work through it and understand that this is a misfiring, that there, is, there are factors that are truly happening and that you can control it. And that's kind of what they're teaching them. 
to learn to appreciate this pain, to kind of to 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 learn how to progress through it basically. And it's it's like an eight week program and and highly successful. And I'm going to I'm going to tell you that we're doing some of the same things, but at a much higher level, because I'm going to tell you how it correlates, because this paper really did due diligence in looking at where the areas of the brain that are misfiring. And it's it's typically in the um, anterior prefrontal cortex in the um, uh, middle anterior middle uh, cingulate cortex in the anterior insula and in particular in this area called um, this the s1 area or the somatosensory um, area that it's it's in the parietal lobe and it's it's a specific area that is is basically where this somatosensory um, programming goes on and it's a big area that they were able to show through um, specific testing, um, looking at at basically at MRIs and and in functional MRIs, and and they were able to show that this retraining the brain could change these areas and dampen down the firing because those are the areas of nocio receptions, meaning they're they're where you're going to sense pain. They all work together. They talk together. And it's basically the somatosensory area that controls this. Well, if you can imagine if they can retrain those areas and dampen down the signaling where you're controlling it, then you have the ability to improve your pain sensitivities and you start to learn to control it. So why is this such a uh, why is this so significant? Well, it's significant because what's really interesting here is we know that actually when the brain starts misfiring or what we know that there's certain cells in the brain, in particular astrocytes um, that are in this this area that that also become a bad astrocyte where they're typically involved in, in, in nurturing neurons in the brain. Okay. It's another brain cell that's typically there to nurture a, a brain cell. And if that cell loses its ability to nurture the neurons and maybe instead in this somatosensory area. So remember somatosensory area of the brain, the parietal part of the brain if that's your bigger area of sensing pain, well, the last thing you want to do is create new synapses in that area because you create new synapses, it's becoming overexcitatory. It's becoming, it's increasing its sensitivity to pain. Well, that's what happens in chronic pain. They actually, you get new synapses that are developing and you get a hyper excitability and these astrocytes, end up instead of nurturing the neurons they cause increased synapses between these neurons and that increases this activity of producing other signaling agents which which we can go into great detail because we know them so what happens is you get this you get this misfiring of astrocytes which is then there are contributions of other cells that lead to this misfiring. Well, we know, if, if we know these pathways that match up exactly with what these areas of the brain that they specifically noted um, in this study, it it's very interesting because we've also identified something called a damaged associated molecular pattern, which is a signaling agent that the brain can create due to stress, um, due to trauma, uh, due to problems like uh, chronic injury problems where it's a signaling agent that can activate um, these astrocytes or microglial cells that activate, activate micro, uh, astrocytes in a bad way that can rewire signaling. So it's basically signaling gets rewired and it's it's the real deal. And we have all of this great scientific literature that has 
has been uh, has been validating this process year after year after year, getting even more significant um, to um, to understanding how this occurs on the cellular level. And here you have a, a kind of a broader study at, you know, from the 30,000 foot view looking at, well, hey, look, let's just do some cognitive training. Well, what does cognitive training do? What is mindful training, meditation, that type of process where you start to try to control your brain? What does that do? Well, it controls, actually, it can control the production of those damaged associated molecular patterns that are signaling agents that lead to increased inflammatory signaling agents out of those nurturing cells of the neuron. And it makes sense. It absolutely makes sense. So, and, th and those have kind of been the, the leading theories and I've really generalized this quite a bit, but but trying to put this together where it really makes sense that when we go after pain, we're using we're we're so so we're already talking to the patient and and number one, a lot of these chronic pain patients have been told, you know, that this is in your head, that this is this doesn't make sense, that this type of pain, uh, you know, you had it on this side and now it's on the opposite extremity. That makes no sense. Well, actually, it all does make sense. It actually, you, we can reproduce that on the cellular level. And if, and, and it's been documented how pain can shift and it's all related to signaling again. And so once you can establish with a patient that we understand what the process is and you can educate them as to well let let me let me describe this to you this chronic pain problem it's not that change that we see on the mri of your of your cervical spine or your lumbar spine um it may have started that way the pain may have started that way but it it never turned off the cycle never turned off and let's let's explain why and it could be for a number of factors why it didn't turn off, but it might have started that way. Just like it started that way when I punched myself in the in the arm here, and then that cycle stopped and we're able to shut it down. Well, so imagine if um, if you're able to start to explain this to a patient and they start to get, they comprehend it. No one's ever explained that to them before. So in a way, you're doing some of this cognitive therapy with them in telling them, hey, I understand, let me help you understand. Because the more a patient understands, the more informed the patient is, I guarantee you the more they're going to participate in their care and the better thing that you've got a better chance at, at improving symptoms and, and oh problems. Gosh. So, so, so that's, so when you hear me talking to patients, as you do, I'm informing them that I'm working on this because I know it's there. Mm -hmm. And so, so we, and that's why you let you go through this long discussion and you say, okay, well, let's go through these steps. Well, when you start on that and then they have a better appreciation and then you say, okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the cellular level here. I'm going to give you. I'm going to open a door for you, meaning I got to give you a nugget that what I just said makes sense. And I can give your brain the ability to start helping you think in a positive way to work with me. I'll work on the cell level. You work on your level and we'll meet in the in the middle here. So when I use some of the peptides that we work with to to influence this, what I'm really doing is I'm sending a peptide that's sending a message to turn off activated astrocytes, activated microglial cells that sit in the dorsal root ganglion, that sit in the dorsal horn, that sit in the spinal cord, that sit in, that are in the um, in the uh, somatosensory um, S1 area, the the uh, um, in the parietal lobe, 
they're all in this, they're all activated in a way that we don't want them overactivated. So I'm going to start turning off signaling or helping, helping to give the body a chance to know what feeling better is like. So, so that's, and if you can imagine, so it's so when, when I describe it, you hear me say, okay, so your pain is um, going down the back of your leg. That's the S1 dermatome maybe. So we're going to do something where that unmyelinated C fiber, which is a sensory fiber, we're going to inject this peptide in that dermatome. It's going to follow that unmyelinated C fiber up the dorsal root ganglion, which in the dorsal root ganglion, there are astrocytes, they're microglial cells, they're cells that are influencing cell signaling that are not signaling correctly. They're misfiring, they're programmed wrong. Well, these peptides help change the polarity or the, the uh, inflammatory state of those cells. That's what they're known to do. And it doesn't stop there. It goes into the spinal cord where there's microglial cells that are, that are, and if these cells, these microglial cells and these astrocytes, which are basically cells that are supposed to be nurturing these neuronal connections, if they're not cleaning house and giving these neurons their help and they're signaling bad signaling agents, then they're increasing this sensory of pain. Um, all the way through from the door. And, and there's these great studies that have shown astrocytes specific to the dorsal root ganglion, astrocytes specific to the dorsal horn in the spinal cord, astrocytes in the somatosensor area of the brain. I mean, it's really fascinating when you see all these correlations that make sense. So, so I had it uh, years ago. I just thought, wow, what if I could just give somebody just a, the moments of, hey, how does it feel when it feels good and when they've been in pain for so long? Can we help them reprogram? And to some extent, it was, it was, I'd like to say I was, I'd like to say it was, I, I was thinking this through all the way. I had some of it figured out, but I did, it took me years to keep figuring out and following the papers that kept validating the different levels. I, I had no idea it kept going all the way to the brain and back down the spinal cord. And there were multiple areas where all these cells existed. I had no, I didn't know that, but it made sense that I knew it was somewhere. Um, and I knew what cells were capable of when it, when things went wrong, because we had some, you know, some basic science studies that showed it, but it's just been fascinating because it's all come true and, and it's, it's delineated and, and we're making progress when we do this, when we go after injecting a peptide that follows the nerve root up the dorsal root ganglion, addresses those cells there, follows up the dorsal column into the dorsal horns where there are synapses of neurons and there's other, there's the microglial cells and these astrocytes that are there, they're supposed to be nurturing and it helps turn those around. And the same thing in the brain, uh, in the somatosensory area, and to some extent in the anterior uh, prefrontal cortex and the middle um, cingulate gyrus and the anterior insula. Other areas that they're all communicating because they're sensory areas, nociceptive areas of the brain. So you're getting these all in play and you're giving that patient that one moment of wow, okay, I'm feeling this. This is, this is amazing. This is making sense to me. So things start making sense. And then you can, you can start having these conversations. Like if I can buy them time for a couple days or a week, or in, sometimes it's, you know, it, it can be really dramatic. You've seen it. It can be one injection and, and it's, that's it. It can be one injection and you buy them two weeks or three weeks, or you buy them a few days it's all different, but it's pretty dramatic. And you give them a chance to start working on this cognitive part where they've never had that relief. And they, and they start to learn that, okay, wait a second, I can control this. And, it, and that's when you hear me 
you know, when we keep talking and, uh, and having discussions with the patients, I keep working on that part to help them understand they can control this. So it's really a combination of using some of these aspects of this paper, not, not to the extent that they do it. I, I think the paper's brilliant. You, now you can correlate, you know, from what you've seen, Karen, oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. I hear you. This is what we do. Um, this is very significant, not just with pain. It's significant with autoimmune disease. It's it, there's such a big place here that we just have not recognized yet in the power of the brain. It's why placebo, it's why placebos work because it's the power of the brain and the signaling agents that we're still learning about. But so cool. But it, it, so I have a I have a basic question, Bob. Okay. Okay. So in the last episode we did, which is which is totally related to what you're talking about now, but we were focusing on cell communication and in this and here i'm hearing you talk about cell rewiring that i didn't hear at all last episode so i would love to know and i think i kind of heard it in your when you're talking about educating the patient but is that how you're you're essentially rewiring pathways when you're talking about rewiring um the synapses are you talking about um by educating them you are influencing the type of communication that's happening in the cell. Is is that what you mean by that? Yes. So when I say rewiring, it's just, you know, when you're talking about a, a wire system, you're talking about how the brain may, in, it, it, cells communicate by signaling. Um, nerves from like the brain connect by wiring of nerves basically axons and nerves to a specific area you know it goes from the brain to like the thalamus to the um and then let's just for better purpose say the spinal cord and then dorsal ganglion and then extremity or something it, it's like that's a that's a wiring thing i'm talking about or, or brain is all about wiring because a neuron transmits signals. A neuron has all those cells we talked about. You know, it has my my uh, mitochondria. It has um, nucleus. It has you know, it has all the things in other cell. It's just another type of cell. It's a neuron, but that neuron signals through axons that are in nerves that that are conducting electrical kind of conductivity to, you know, uh, to make muscles work and activate or to, um, to pull in messaging, what we call afferent signaling from the periphery of the uh, extremity of a arm or leg or something to sense pain or temperature or touch. Um, so that's wiring. And so wiring gets, goes wrong in the sensory areas because it's just assume that you've had all the wiring done as you've grown, you know, immature, you have an immature phenotype that starts in that neuron. And it's basically that neuron's done, right? It's done. It doesn't, a neuron isn't in a, a cell cycle. It's basically there and it's done its growth. Well, in chronic pain, these neurons start growing again. They start, they have increased neuronal plasticity and um, synaptic networking. And so you're in areas of sensitivity and pain. It's actually like they're growing again and rewiring and you don't want that. that that's what you don't want. So it's like all of a sudden this immature phenotype of, of a cell has been activated again and it's it's and we know the pathways. It actually is a, a, a metallotropic um, glutamate five activation um, where it's a hyper excitability of glutamate. That it's a receptor on the astrocyte, and that increases calcium in the astrocyte, and then the astrocyte throws out like the thrombospondin uh, one that then becomes this agent that increases synaptic dendritic changes of the neuron and that increases this excitability and in, in, in this whole process so it's and there and there and it's different in different areas that's in the 
that's in the parietal area of the brain. It's different in the in the spinal cord and it's different in the dorsal root ganglion. And, and they've proven that with different receptors. Um, uh, and, and, you know, the immune system. So what people don't understand is like, or, or you should understand is like when I mentioned microglial cell, that's an immune cell. And when, when this microglial cell becomes a bad actor and the astrocyte which is kind of the housekeeper of, of this neuronal uh, process, isn't house cleaning well anymore. You know, things go bad. And then other, other attractants that will attract more signaling age will attract more immune cells into these areas. So that's why immunity plays a role in this. And that's why you see us go after immune modulation because it makes a difference. So, so it's like you, you open the door for this patient and trying to work on all those aspects. You get them, you get them mentally in your game because you give them that hope and it all starts to then click because they, they're, they're engaged and they want to do more. And then you can start really going after immune modulation and you can do things to, if you know all the pathways, you can start knocking them off and making this a really solid process for them over time. So, um, real quick, doc, that's, that's fascinating. Cause you just mentioned like a whole other system coming into play in pain. How much does diet have in, in this process, if any? Well, diet is true. Diet is huge, right? Because because, okay, so diet is a big player because remember what we said back in cell signaling about diet. The cell has to have the flexibility of utilizing its substrates, glucose, fatty acids, um, proteins, to adjust and adapt to changes. Well, let's assume that when an injury occurs and then somebody doesn't get better and they have continued pain when it should have taken care of itself, right? You should go through these cycles where pain starts and then the body works to improve that pain process. Well, assume that because of diet, how we indicated how diet can influence how a cell is efficient, if that cell loses its efficiency, it can no longer signal to the other cells effectively like it wants to signal. And let's say that's the neuron. Let's say that's the astrocyte. Let's say that's the microglial cell because they're all cells. If they're not communicating correctly, things go wrong. And this is no different. So we've gone from diabetes, which we talked about before, where signaling goes wrong to chronic pain where signaling goes wrong. So this is important. This is why um, diet, like, so this is why, why sometimes people, when you start working, when they, when they give you the access of saying, okay, let's start working on diet. Let's start working on giving back that cell, its metabolic flexibility. And what was all that about? Improving cellular redox. It all comes back to redox, all comes back to redox. So if I'm improving cellular redox, I am then influencing the signaling of the cell to communicate, meaning cell, meaning communication of astrocyte to neuron, microglial cell to astrocyte, and they're going to nourish that neuron and that neuron's going to do its job. So that has everything to do with nutrition. And in fact, it has everything to do with the microbiome also because the microbiome controls some incredible factor. It, 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 it has neurotransmitters that it produces. It has an asundry of fatty acids, short chain fatty acids, middle chain fatty acids that are very important in cell function and um, producing you know, certain fatty acids are histone deacetylase inhibitors, which are, which have a big influence in the brain um, and have a big influence on, 
on pain, actually. Histone deacetylase inhibitors are very significant in pain control. Um, so that's why when you clean up somebody's microbiome, it actually is because you've gotten their diet correct and you've helped them produce like more butyrate. And more butyrate, butyrate is in a, is a histone deacetylase inhibitor. And that will work in conjunction with, um, with other signaling molecules or, or peptides and, and small molecules, it'll help that, that signaling of working um, against certain pain um, uh, receptors that are, are, are involved in like what I said in the, in certain areas of the spinal cord or that peripheral nerve, dorsal root ganglion. And, and we can get very specific to the exact mechanisms of where those things influence. It, it's, it's fascinating, but it's, it's real science. And, and so if you know these pathways, you can start building this foundation back for these patients that uh, becomes incredible because you can understand. I mean, it's a cycle. Um, a lot of, you know, as you get into chronic pain states, everything goes bad and, and even chronic pain states can lead to autoimmune problems. And there are always microbiome problems with chronic pain, uh, for, in, in my opinion. So you gotta work from all of these angles and, but it's not going to happen unless the patient gives you that opportunity to, um, to participate in helping them. And you have to, you know, it's a, it has to be education and it has to be steps and it, and you just can't throw 10,000 supplements at somebody and, and, and think you're going to do anything with them. Um, you have, they have to be, uh, and I say that um, off the cuff, I, I don't mean that in a bad way. It, it's just, it, it, you have to go, you have to educate them as to what's going wrong. Um, and a whole underappreciated area here that we haven't never, we haven't really talked about either is I'm going to tell you that in these state, in these pain states that are associated with the, with most issues of the back and neck and extremities, there are always some biomechanical issues that have gone wrong. And they're very small and subtle changes that grow over time. And it's because the body has been protecting itself because of pain and it's adjusting. And so it's shutting down, it's shutting down uh, uh, areas of uh, flexibility or other muscles are working harder to compensate for areas of pain. So there's misfiring of muscles. So you have to appreciate that just as much as the small pathways of the cell, just as much as the cognitive therapy of the brain, just as much as the microbiome, just as much as the immune system, you've got to include the biomechanics. And, and that makes it a complete um, process when you can actually dive into all of these areas and dissect it and make sense to the patient. That's, a, that's, that's how you get this buy-in again, because when you can show somebody biomechanically, let me show you, we're going to break down the deficits you have, and we're going to show you how we can change little deficits right here and now that your brain's going to go, oh my gosh, I can do this. I can actually, oh my gosh, look at this. How did this change right in front of my eyes? Okay, I'm in. And that's what we do. We show them these changes. And then you slowly start building that you have, if you don't have the buy-in of the patient and they're not participating, you're going to lose. I don't care what you give them, you're going to lose. But you have to have all of these things working together. And you can see how you've got to kind of find your areas to get your wins get the brain in gear, get that cognitive involvement, get that mindful participation. And then it, it starts to kind of all start falling into place over time. And 
and and you can go through waves but it, it they're all they're good waves because it's about adapting again the body has to learn to adapt again but what you're going to do when you work on these biomechanics so you can't just expect okay i'm going to give somebody this medication and they're going to just be better well in a chronic state of pain i'm going to tell you they have severe weaknesses there are severe changes, there are significant changes biomechanically. It is there. And if you don't work on correcting that, you're not giving them the chance to capture their life back. And, and that is the defining point there is, is you got to get all these things working and then you start strengthening them, strengthening them, right? We're all about muscle and muscle working appropriately and getting people stronger. Um, I'm, I'm so I'm so over it hearing people not talking about strength and how important training is to improve all of these areas because muscle and, and here comes the next phase. Once you get muscle functioning efficiently, remember muscle is the biggest endocrine gland in the body. It's producing myokines, these exokines that we only know so many of. I, you know, they're, they're, we know there are like five or 700 of them, something like that. We know maybe 60 or 70 of them that are, are beneficial to specific cells and organs of the body. I mean, come on, it, it, it's just overwhelming how important the power of muscle is. So when you put this whole story together, it starts to make sense. And that has to be communicated to the patient and they have to feel it and they have to be part of it. And I, that's why we're successful, um, I, I think, in helping people in this in that realm of, of treatment. Um, well, you just answered my next question, doc is, was, you know, you talked about the immune system and then we moved over to diet and then we moved over to the microbiome. And then I was going to ask, okay, well, where does, where does the exercise fit in? And then you just, you just hit the nail on the head. <laughs> it, it all comes together. Um, but the patient has to let it happen. And they've got to be, you know, the, it's, it's always, it's, it's never, it's, it's hard, but if you can give them glimpses of improvement where they've never had it before and show them how you, you can, you describe it, you, you talk about it, you inform them, this is what's happening. And then also you show them the biomechanics. And you can show them little changes biomechanically that they can experience right then and there. It's very compelling, and really cool, dog. And it makes sense. It, it it totally makes so much sense. Like you you I I haven't heard you explain it like this in this detail ever. But it was I but always. Karen, you've never asked. Shoulder. You've never asked me. <laughs> well, I'm glad we're doing this episode. But it's like, it makes so much sense. You're fixing the things that are going wrong biomechanically. I, I just never put that together. I just thought, oh, doc just wants you to exercise. But it was never, you're always thinking like a, like three or four steps ahead, knowing where this is going. It's, it's fascinating. Well, injury, injury leads. There's many, many other aspects that happen that, that follow injury. Um, whether that injury is um, traumatic, as in um, um, an injury of trauma, or an injury of stress, or an injury of from a viral infection, or radiation, or um, bacterial, or um, heavy metals, or toxins, or um, uh, you know, in any of those or any of the, the, anything like that, which are environmental, it can all lead to any of these things. Um, it's just pick, it, it just happens to be where, 
you know, where did it start? How did it start? Um, but I think you can put the picture together pretty well for the patient. And once they get the picture, that's why I like to always try if I, if, if we, it's so hard because you only have so much time. Um, but over if patients, you know, if they continue to believe in what you're doing and they give you the time to develop that story for them and progressively put the pieces together, you've solved a puzzle that they've had in their mind in, in their mind and body for a long time because they, they, they they've not been given that um, they've never heard an explanation like that. They've ne it's never made sense to them. Right. Um, you always hear the same thing, you know, why is this? Why? I don't yeah. understand this. And well, they don't I've, believe that it's going to last. <laughs> they think it's temporary. They're just waiting for it to come back. Yeah. And, and that's the fear. And that's so, so if, so remember these areas are hyper, are, are hyper excitable. So fear it's so fear and reward are in the same areas of the brain and they're hyper excitable. So they are high, they are fearful. They are more fearful. So, so that's a real statement. Um, it's very interesting. I mean, it's learning like learning long-term learning when you memorize something and you retain it, it's the same process as chronic pain because you're rewiring to learn that pain basically. And, and it's, it's a, it's a mechanism just like learning. Uh, it's a correlation that is very interesting too. But anyways, um, I hope I made this sound. I hope I put it in a perspective where I'm not losing anybody talking about all these pathways that I love. Um, that's for mastermind and for, you know, when we go dive into this, because this so is dark. what this is what we need to know as the physicians and caretakers, we need to know those pathways so we can pick them apart and put the puzzle together for the patient and figure out, well, where do you start? And so that's kind of why we like to start and depending on, you know, depending on the state of the patient and and where they are. Um, that, that's kind of how you go at it. And it, it, and it, it's why it's why we spend so much time teaching all of these different areas and these pathways to make you smarter and give you the ability to help people. And I believe in patients knowing this too. Um, and that's why you see me always teaching them it, it, that, you know, trying to help them understand it. And, um, and boy, that makes for an amazing team um, when you, when you can do things like that. Normally I'm quite lost, especially in mastermind doc, but I think, I think you, you framed it really nicely. You still, you still got rabbit holy and, um, uh, a, a little science fair, but it was such a cool way to look at pain that again, you haven't revealed yet. You've been holding out on me, doc. Um, I have a weird question. Wait a second. Did you just call Did you just say science fair? Are you, are you like... <laughs> Are you like quoting my wife? Like I'm going off. I trip? love that Joss called it a science fair because now it's, that's how I categorize it. When, when you go down the pathway she, hole. She doesn't, she doesn't understand. I'm going to teach. And she's like, honey, go have fun at your science fair. You, know, you, you just have a great time. It's like, Wait, first place, oh, my, oh my God, we're, we're, we're talking about we're talking about upregulating these interleukins and these chemokine ligand twos and these, you know, these chemokine CXC motifs and all these things that are so important in inhibiting pain. And she's like, have fun at the science fair. <laughs> Certainly not knocking on science fairs, but it, it does get in, it down, down a very scientific pathway. And um, normally I, I start to like tune out, but today I was like, whoa, super cool but 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 now understanding the bigger picture now you can kind of now you'll pick up more it makes sense. It, you, it totally makes sense doc why you you put the plan of care in action with some of your cases um i have a weird question and i want to preface it by saying i'm not by any means criticizing any form of, of care but um we get a lot of these these folks coming in to see you doc where 
um, they don't want, especially with the chronic back pain and neck pain, they don't want to t constantly be on these pain meds. They know it's not good for them. And so they're looking for other holistic ways. And one of the first places they, they go to is massaging and of course with, with chiropractics. Um, so what, what is, what is happening over there? And they do find some relief. Like they, they always say that, Hey, this is, this has been helping me, but what can I do to make it so that it doesn't come back? So we'd love to know like what, what the massages and those things are doing. And um, it, it's, it sounds like it's a temporary fix, but I'm not really sure. Again, I, I just don't know. So I would love to kind of get your sense of it. Yeah, I, I guess it, I guess you hit it on the head. It's, it's all about timing. Um, and some of that can be very, very effective um, when the timing's right. You know, it's, it's just, that's a, that's opening a big box of, of more questions. Um, there's a place for everything. And it's a matter of, of some things potentially are just temporary and, um, or they may, they may be mechanically giving a glimpse of what we talked about, like improvement and, but, but then they, you can't, they can't seize on, on the moment of taking advantage of what they've done with that. And, and, and that's another angle that you could look at it like that. And that's where you have to go at the cellular level. You have to do all these things to make the cell efficient. You, you, you're just not going to win. That's, that's why, um, that, that's why it, it only lasts so long, potentially maybe. Um, but you know, that's, that's very, it's variable depending on what the problem is. So there's a, there's a place for all of it. It's just, where does it fit? And, and that's where I think um, the more everybody understands about this process of what I just went through in understanding the mechanisms and the mechanics, the more effective those therapies can be and when to utilize them. Um, so, you know, we see, you may see some people say, well, this didn't work for me. Um, this person didn't do me right, or this person hurt me. Well, they weren't hurting you. They weren't, they were doing something correct that possibly just was the wrong timing and where it can be very effective for people, again, depending on the timing. Um, so, you know, nobody's out there to intentionally injure people or make things worse. Everybody's out there to help people. I mean, I, I think we have to have that general assumption and because it's true. Um, and everybody's really focused on it and it's just tough when you're in pain. Um, so that being said, the uh, my best answer I can give to you there is you just have to be really careful, especially in the chronic pain patients, um, where they are in the state they are in. And, or you know, what we typically do, we'll find out where some of those things may have had some little effect or they helped a little bit at one time and then they they weren't effective. We'll try to reinstitute some of those things or some of those therapists or their, their people that we're working with them um, later on in their programs, right? And, and we try to re-engage that when it's the right time. Um, I, I think that's the best way to say that. Um, okay. And, and, and then there's some of those people are very, very effective at understanding everything I just said. Um, now to the level of the Southern medicine part, I, I don't, I think this is all relatively new to most people. Um, why? Because we're teaching it and, and it's, it's a new area that people haven't put these pieces together yet, but we're giving them definable ways um, and, and reproducible ways that, we haven't been able to help people before. And that's pretty significant, I think. Very, very cool, Doc. Um, doing a doing a lot of a lot of great education, a lot of great um in knowledge out there just for, for folks dealing with this. Okay. So well, I always like to end with a supplements question because it's an easy way for people. It's it's over the counter. You mentioned butyrate. Buter we had a whole episode, by the way, dedicated to butyrate. So please listen to that one if you haven't already. But are there any other supplements that you would recommend specifically for those dealing with chronic pain? Oh, boy. Yeah, there could be lots of them. It just depends. Well, I would always say you can remember remember what I talked about 
um, just collagen, collagen peptides or collagen hydrosylates. They are immune modulators. So they work on immune, they work in regulating T reg cells. So they have a place in pain. They have a place in joint disease. They have a place in the spine with back, back problems. Something very simple like collagen um, can, can be very rewarding, or at least it can start building that foundation. So, um, so that's, that's absolutely um, something that I would say um, without a doubt. Um, ketone esters. Um, we, you know, we're, I'm going to, I believe I'm, I think, am I right? I'm doing a mastermind on that or not. I don't know if you give, if we've given that out yet, but, um, you know, and we've, we've really, we've written a couple of papers with some brilliant people on ketone esters and, and their significance in the cell efficiency and ketone esters can play a significant role here in, in adding to this overall health and improving cell efficiency. Um, so th that's a, you know, that's a food supplement. Um, uh, and it can be very, very effective in, in, in this process. Um, I would say I've also talked about, and I, I think I'll end with this one because I could go on and on here, but it, again, you don't want to overwhelm people with, with, with supplements and so forth. Um, but there are, you know, instead of, and those, and remember, these are things that I, these, these things I brought up aren't like direct antioxidants. They're actually making changes in cells. They're not out there as scavengers is because people way, use way too many antioxidants. And we talked about how antioxidants can be, can put people in over reductive states and they influence redox the wrong way. And, and you see that time and time again. Um, alpha ketoglutarate is something that we really get behind and alpha ketoglutarate is a is, is a an excellent supplement in working in the krebs cycle and its influences on um bone health collagen muscle the immune system i mean you name it. it it's a huge player and it's something that we have less and less of as we get older and it can have such an influence on infertility um bone density, sarcopenia. I mean, we, we just hit some big ones right there that are, that you can, you can improve with the TAM amino acid alpha ketoglutarate. Um, so I hope that helps. Um, and, and there definitely there are more, um, but I think that's a, that's a great beginning right there, um, where you can make some significant changes and, and overall, right. It's, it's, it's a good diet. It's a balanced diet and um, an exercise. Strength building. Well, combination of aerobic and resistance training, correct. Wonderful. Well, <laughs> folks, that is all the time that, that we have with Dr. Seed. Such a fascinating view on pain. That is new to me, and I get to shadow you wherever you go, Doc. Um, this is a such a great great way to introduce various ways to to go about this um and doc i want to thank you for your knowledge i want to thank you for explaining this to me in a way that non-medical people can understand and of course for your time and as a big thank you to dr seeds everyone needs to come and join us at peptide world congress happening october 21st through the 22nd at the gorgeous four seasons las vegas it is going to be two days filled with information like this there is it's going to be a nice audience of of course, our practitioners, our core, but also our, our health enthusiasts like myself that are really just wanting to, again, start rewiring our brain to start understanding what's going on um, and really taking taking our health into our own hands. All and, right. Yeah. And I want to, I just want to, I want to add to that, Karen. I've, I've been so excited about the feedback that we get now that these courses that that we're putting on are so meaningful that they're that we get the feedback from the practitioners that these are the best courses they've ever been to that speaks that's volumes. huge 
that speaks volumes. And, and, and at this World Congress, I've been so impressed with like last year, not just providers, but but um, people participating that, that may not be treating people, but are interested in their own health and improving their own health. I couldn't believe, you know, I, you asked me at the end, hey, doc, can we let a couple of these people in? And I was like, um, you know what? This is information they need to let, let's let this could be a great experiment. Let's let's let a group of people into this meeting because I would like to know what their responses are in, in into listening to these, you know, 27 talks. Oh my gosh, light bulb went off in my head after that. And the feedback we got back from those people was like, okay, this needs to be open to everybody. A meeting like that needs to be open to everyone because it's such useful information. And I'm going to tell you something. We learn from that group of people that where you have, again, what's happening, you have dialogue and communication and you've got collaboration between practitioners and people interested in their own health. And, and it's it's a different conversation and it's an amazing conversation. And what are we all about? The conversation. And and so that's why I think we're we're seeing the 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 amazing numbers and it's it's still what a month, two months out and it, it's exploded. It's so I'm I'm beyond excited now with the um with with the responses of of what you know of what we've already accomplished and what i just see gaining incredible momentum because we're putting people together and we're giving really really solid science based information with with really good communication and i think that's the difference i think that's how people you know, people are making their own choices. You can be out there and say whatever you want, but the proof is in the pudding with the people coming back. The proof is in the pudding with the growth. The proof is in the pudding with the momentum. The proof is in the pudding with the exciting passion that everybody brings to the table. And that's what we're all about. So that's what makes us fun. Well said, Doc, as per usual, well, we hope to see everyone there. If you can't join us in person, don't worry. You can still join us virtually, and it's going to be a fabulous experience. Lots of time for Q&A, lots of time for direct conversations with not just Dr. Seeds, but the entire speaker list. We have social events happening on that Friday evening, as well as ample, ample ways that you can uh, communicate with each other and exchange contact information for the future. All right, well, folks, everything that you've heard and seen today on today's episode is all for informational purposes only. Please always co consult with your physician before moving forward with anything that you've heard here. Uh, that said, Doc, another fantastic episode for the books. Can you believe it? This is number 53 episode 53 doc Woo! two years and 53 episodes later i like it <laughs> and we're gonna keep it going folks keep your questions coming send them over to info at seeds.md that's info at s-e-e-d-s dot m-d mary david and we will make sure that we respond to that right away. I am so sorry about all the like sounds that you heard today and my and me not silencing my cell phone. I will do it next time. But other than that, we will see you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye, Doc. Bye. Thank you, Karen. <laughs>